Hey guys, I'm going to show you a, a kind of like an unboxing and a review and a config video on a, a new tool I got here. This is a replica or a knockoff of a GM multiple diagnostic interface that I got here recently. And let's get this stuff out of the box here. We'll get the box out of the way. But uh, what you get in this particular one, it's a lot of research before I picked this particular one out and made a purchase, but in the one I got, you get the unit, you get a USB uh, 2 cable to connect from the unit to your laptop or computer. You get a uh, uh, cable for the diagnostic link connector, the DLC connector on the vehicle to the unit, and you get a couple of stickers to kind of complete the, the cosmetic look. If we take a look at this guy, it, it, this particular one, I did a lot of research on this, this is probably the best um, level replica or clone you can get. Uh, you know, the GM sticker is going to go on the front here to kind of complete the look. And I'll show you what that looks like applied in a minute. And uh, on the back, there's kind of like a kind of a look to have it be the manufacturing sticker. Of course, you know, you don't see a serial number or anything like that. But, you know, aside from those cosmetics, some other differences with the genuine MDI, uh, cosmetic-wise. The genuine MDI would have four security screws, and the, the knockoff has four Phillips screws. And the, the genuine MDI would have a brass threaded insert here so that you could uh, screw in the USB cable lock that would normally go in here on a genuine MDI. Normally when the cable is plugged in, there's a retainer that holds the cable here so it doesn't actually come out while you're doing programming. This guy's got like a little notch for it being pushed in, but it's not actually there. The other thing I found is the, uh, the RJ45, the wired ethernet. This transmits, but it doesn't receive, rendering it basically non-functional. And I've encountered two units across two different ranges of, of time and, and sellers that have this problem. This is actually a manufacturing defect. And I think in another video I'll tackle fixing that for you guys to show you how to get it functional. Uh, other than that, some other differences with the real MDI. If you open it up, you take this plastic cover off. It's got Wi-Fi. I definitely recommend you order the one with Wi-Fi. They sell them with just USB, but the chance with the just USB one is you'll get a lower quality board or even a totally different type. Um, with USB is the full circuitry built out. And, I'm sorry, with, with Wi-Fi is the full circuitry built out. And the type of Wi-Fi that this comes with, it's actually like a compact flash-based Wi-Fi. Uh, back in the early to, to mid-2000s, this was all the rage, right? So compact flash, like you'd put memory cards in a camera back then, there were, there were some Wi-Fi cards you could get too. Now this guy does 802.11b and 802.11g only. It's kind of older standards, 2.4 gigahertz. So if you have a, a modern uh, Wi-Fi router or access point, you'll have to put it in mixed G mode uh, in order for this guy to be, uh, be seen and, and work. So uh, let's uh, go to the software side. Now, so this didn't come with any software, and that's actually how I like it. If you get something like a customized GM MDI manager, that's actually a bad sign in my opinion because it's probably something modified for a board inside that's not 100% compatible. So how do we test that this is like 100%? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to get this USB cable in because we're going to get ready to hook it up to this laptop that I'm going to bring into view here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Google, and we're going to go get site here for a second. I'm going to go get the software for this. So I'm going to show you. All you have to do is go to Google and type in MDI Manager Software GM. And the first hit you should get is the genuine MDI Manager and USB drivers from Bosch. So Bosch is GM's partner on, on building this particular device. And rather than get something from China, you don't know what it is, just get it from the genuine source here. Download the setup program for version 8.3.103.117. That's what's current at the time we're doing this video. And I've already done that ahead of time. And what we'll do is we'll hook the unit up now. And actually, you know, as I, as I, as I get ready to hook the unit up, I realize there's one other thing I want to tell you guys about that's different from a, a regular or a real MDI. And that is, let me take this back out for a second, the batteries. So a real MDI would take power from three places, uh, through the DLC interface, uh, through a, an AC adapter, and through batteries so that when you're doing uh, diagnostics and you start the engine, it doesn't power out. These, none of these clones work on battery power, but this one actually has the terminals soldered onto the logic board. And there's a circuit on the logic board. I've opened one of these up. And they've removed the components. So at one time, they probably tried to get the battery circuit working and ran into some issues with it. And rather than spend the money to fix it, they just they just took it off and disabled it. But um, we're going to power it up with um, my Tech 2's 12-volt 
DC 2 amp uh, AC adapter. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up this MDI manager software that I mentioned that we installed earlier. And um, the first time you install this, it's in the first time you run it after installation and you plug the device in, it's going to load some USB drivers. It takes maybe three to five minutes. And rather than go through that in the video, I just skipped it. So I'm going to plug this guy in and I'm going to show you a, the last check for a good replica. So when it comes up on power, you know, start off the green check. It'll move over to this icon with the vehicle, doing a power on self test. And after a few seconds, it's going to jump over to the icon with the computer. It's going to do some testing there. When that's all done, it's going to come back to the green check and it's going to beep. And it's going to the green LED for the power on and it's going to beep again. It's like a chirp and a beep. That's the sign of a good high quality replica. And the, and the last test is that the power button actually works. It has kind of like a sound effect and then it lights goes off and then turns it back on. And it'll do the same power and sequence again. Some of these knockoffs, right, multiple LEDs come on. Uh, maybe none of these LEDs come on. Maybe the power switch is not functional. These are all good things you could do to test that it's a high quality replica or clone, as people call it like that. So there's your chirp. And there's your beep. So now I'm going to plug it into, actually, I already plugged it in the laptop. All right, so now it sees it because I already plugged it in. I forgot. So now we see a little USB symbol on top of the MDI icon. And that uh, you know, picks up the serial number of the device. And now I can click Connect. And I get a green check mark. And I get an activity light because I have connectivity from the device to the computer. If we had it hooked up to the vehicle and we were doing some, some actual work with it uh, using GM's TIS to web, I'll show it in a few minutes, then you'd actually get the activity on the vehicle as well. The middle one is a red LED for an error. You don't ever want to see that. It's a bad thing if, if it happens, but that's what that one's for. All right, so now we go in the MDI manager and we can do some, con we can check properties of things. We can check, for example, to update the software that we just talked about downloading. There's a version that gets of the firmware that this MDI manager will download to the device. And we can see that the version that's in there is, is already up to date. And then we can do some network setup. So if I wanted to enable the wireless, I could click enable wireless. I could go take a look at the access point. I don't have uh, a 11G support. My stuff runs just on 11N and 11AC only. So I don't have the ability to look at this old stuff. But this is where you pick your SSID and configure your password and have the wireless work. Take that off right now. This guy is set up for um, DHCP and enabling the, the wired uh, Ethernet, you know, I could take it off. Like I said, it's not really functional yet until we can debug what the defect is on that. But wh whatever you change, you can just go in, apply, yes, it'll download the config to the device, and that'll be its new setup. And you can go into properties, and we can see it's only set up for USB and wired, wireless, uh, or in Bluetooth, we're all disabled. Now, serial number wise, they're all the same. and if you see one that's 579, it's the version I'm, I'm, I'm showing. This seems to be the high quality type that you see on eBay and uh, AliExpress lately, at the time I'm doing the video, so you're probably gonna get the one I'm showing. The MAC addresses, the USB addresses, they're all the same on every one of them. They just uh, you know burned a chip with it and just kept running it on all the same on every one of them. All right, I'm gonna turn this back on because I'm gonna do some work on that later tonight. I don't wanna forget. And now it shows that there's a a wired Ethernet configuration, but it hasn't actually got anything in DHCP yet. All right, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna disconnect it and I'm gonna show you something else. So it still shows the USB because it's still connected, but when I unplug it, when we go back to the MDI manager, now we get a red X because we can't see it anymore. So what I wanna show you is, um, I, I like to reflash with the genuine GM firmware just because I don't know what these guys in the Chinese factory did. All right, so I'm gonna turn this guy off and I'm gonna take the power out. Make sure it's completely, not you know, all the charges out of it. And then as I put the power back on, I'm gonna hold the power button down. And I'm gonna watch for this red light to flash. It takes about 10 seconds. There it is. All right, when that red light flashes, um, it means it's picked up that I'm holding the power button down and it knows that what I wanna do is I wanna put the device in what's called recovery mode. And what that's going to trigger when we plug it back in with the MDI manager, hopefully if I caught it, held it down enough, when it sees it, now it says recover instead of connect. And what a recover is going to do is a recover is going to go in and re rewrite 
the flash storage. You know, so a whole new copy of the embedded operating system that's on here. This guy runs a little version of Linux. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the things I'll show you in the end, this little eight pin round connector next to the DLC. This is a serial port. And if you go Google online, there's some guys that have figured out what the pinout of this thing is, and you can actually, you know, plug into it the serial port and, and, and watch U-boot coming up with Linux and then get to a prompt and interact with this. I might do a video on that at some point, presuming that that works on the, on the replica. What I'm going to do this for, though, back here to MDI Manager, is by putting it in recovery mode, I forced everything out of date, and it thinks it needs to update it. And I want it to do this update because I, I think this is a really good test. This is a good test of compatibility uh, with the genuine MDI. It's a good test of the MDI hardware, the cable, uh, the built-in firmware that it stays for handling the flash process that we're doing. And I know I'm putting on the genuine GM code because I don't know what the factory over there did. I know what I'm getting right now. So it's going to go through. It's going to do a reformat. and It's going to do some, some download here. This is going to take a little bit of time. And so we're going to set this guy aside for a minute. And we're going to go over here. And I'm going to show you some other stuff while this is going. It's probably going to take about five minutes. So while that's going, I'm going to go back to the browser. And I, I, I went ahead and Googled um, this part number 30215 which is the replacement cable keeper. So that's the thing I was telling you about that would normally screw into the real MDI and hold that just so you knew what it was. Um, that's what a picture of it looks like. Hopefully that comes through okay in, in the video. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a website here called www.acdelcotds.com. And this is... Um, GM's technical delivery system. So this is where you're going. This is where the software is that you interact with this device. So unlike the Tech 2, where you had TIS 2000 sitting on a DVD that you'd install onto like a Windows 2000 or a Windows XP uh, PC and then turned into a tech line terminal, everything nowadays since the MDI with the MDI 2 is online and server-based. So we go to TDS's website, and some of the things that are handy to have here, we can look at user guides. And one of the handy user guides is for the MDI. So we pull this up, and we can see you know, what the real MDI looks like. It's a little bit of a brighter shade of blue, I think, than the replica. You know, I've seen, seen a few of these, and it kind of varies. And one of the things I want to show you on this, so we scroll down a little bit, go through a bunch of setup information. It's just a good thing to have. You can see a reference for all the LEDs we were just talking about. And you can see reference for all the connections. And by the way, there's that cable connector for the USB again. It's really the only piece of hardware that's missing from the, uh, the replica that I've seen. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, close this. And another thing that's on here, you can click here and take a look at a bunch of videos uh, AC Delco has on YouTube. A lot of the stuff I covered on here, but these are how to get set up and um, subscribe to TIS to web which replaces TIS 2000 if you're familiar with the Tech 2, how to install the MDI manager which we covered in my video already, how to update the MDI firmware which we're currently doing. Just going to do a check on that, how it's doing. It's still cruising around. It's about halfway done. It's installing the Linux drivers probably for the uh, Wi-Fi and the Ethernet and the USB. Now, a real handy thing on here is this thing called calibration lookup. You can put your VIN number in here and you can get a calibration ID. And all that really means is a calibration is like GM's part number for a firmware update. Just think of it like that. It's like, you know, you've got your iPhone, you get iOS 11.4 on there, or you get another update, 11.4.1. These calibrations are the firmwares that you might put onto the device if you were going to program, for example, the, you know, the electronic brake control module, the engine control module, the transmission control module, anything like that. So this is really handy. This is free. This one's free. The big thing, though, is the Service and Programming Subscriptions interface. And when you go in here, there's the, under TIS to Web, like I said, TIS to Web replaced TIS 2000. If you want to do um, just programming of the calibrations, it's a fairly decent deal. One vehicle VIN for 40 bucks for two years. If it's a relatively new vehicle, that's not too bad because you get two years of updates. If it's an older vehicle, well, you know, they're not doing updates anymore, so you're paying 40 bucks to get updates. But I think that's you know pretty decent. And by the way, it's it's your own choice. There's there's no way to hack this. There's no piracy of this. This only can be done online. There's some other stuff in here, like you know they charge you to update the the Tech 2's firmware that hasn't been updated probably you know in ages, like here 2013. So there's versions of this floating around for the PCMCI card. I wouldn't suggest getting that. Um, GDS is the diagnostic system. 
And this also works with MDI, and you can pay for three days access to it for 57 bucks. That's not too bad to help you go debug something and fix it rather than subscribing, you know, for a long period of time. A dealer might take like the one year 775 option, for example. But this is what you'll need to actually do something with this guy. And I'll do a video here at some point um, with how that works, how you do some SPS programming. All right, so our reflash is done. It's telling us that it's going to uh, restart the device. So we're going to say, okay, and let it do that. And after that's done, the, the programming will be all done. Now, while it's doing that, let me show you something else. Let me show you this thing in comparison to my Tech 2. So here's my Tech 2 clone about a year and a half ago. So you see, this is much smaller and much, much, much lighter weight than the Tech 2, this guy. All right. Now, the reason is the Tech 2 came out in the 90s, and it was designed to be its own computer. And it had all the diagnostic and communication capability built in. And the only time you needed to go back to a PC, which they, you know, they would call like a tech line terminal if it had the TIS 2000 software installed, was to download a calibration that you were going to use to install on the vehicle or to update the tech to itself. The MDI, uh, it basically is the, the control, area, control area network diagnostic interface, the candy interface from the tech 2, which I don't have shown here, it's built in candy, and how to talk to all the different vehicles. And that's it. All the smarts comes from online. And it's just to web. I'm going to click this serial number because this guy's finished booting back up. And I'm going to show you that he came back up. He's all good. Green light. We're getting all the properties. Everything's showing. It says it's up to date. And we can see it's talking just fine. So this is a good kind of, I'm just giving you an overview. This, I think, is a really good quality clone. And um, runs the genuine software just fine. I've uh, given it a shot with my uh, TIS to web subscription. I've Done a programming on a Chevrolet's electronic control brake control module. Did a uh, calibration update. It worked just fine. So I'm very happy with it. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll do a couple more videos of using this and probably take a shot at trying to see if we can fix this uh, LAN connection because that's what I prefer. I don't really trust the Wi-Fi for doing programming. I don't like to sit in it with the laptop. So it'd be great if I could just drag the Ethernet cable over and, and sit on inside and do what I need. But anyway, I hope this video helps you out. And uh, if, you, if you found it was useful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.